Welcome back, everyone, to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and we shall continue with our campaign, reading The Business of State. The Federation's cabinet room had hosted many important discussions of state, including military, social, and otherwise. Today, however, the focus was economic, and instead of politicians, it was ex corporate executives who sat across from the all-night conference table from President Pokorishkin. Representatives from all the major firms operating within Nobles of Beers had they they had come, following overtures from his government to discuss a series of potential deals that could be made. Deals that could, Pokrishka knew, not only have a tremendous impact on the Federation's economic future, but also on the lives of the hundreds of thousands of workers within it. He very much wanted to close these deals, but he also knew keenly that they would not come without cost. The men across from him were to what? To a one, shrugged beyond measure in their field, a field in which he held little experience. They would not agree to anything that would benefit him or the Federation without ensuring that it would, to a greater extent, benefit them. Pokrushkin was prepared to accept that the Federation needed these men in the organizations that they represented, it needed their factories, it needed their capital, it needed their employment, and above all, it needed their support. They could cause no end of trouble for him and his government if they opposed it in any form, and so he flashed them with a wide smile and began to speak. A mutually beneficial partnership? Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. So I asked you guys yesterday, which way we should go with the Rising Phoenix versus the Siberian Bear, as well as Glory to the Pioneers versus Overtures to the People, in which there's a little bit more, actually there's quite a bit of support, support at the time of this recording for us to go down the route of the Siberian Bear. So if you'd like to read about the Rising Phoenix, please go right ahead, but we shall do the Siberian Bear. The Siber Corporation has a bit of an odd history regarding its founding. In the public image, it is associated with the mayor of Barnal, Vasily Shushkin. One of the rare civilian politicians that had found success within Novosibirsk's Silovic dominated political system founded by the landowning bourgeoisie that had come into existence after the fall of the Central Siberian Republic. They produce agricultural equipment and produce, as well as financial institutions that have helped many in Novosibirsk escape the poverty of the working class. The question is both political and economic. The Phoenix had been in a business relationship with the Federation since their founding, and signing contracts with Siberia is a risk. However, Russia will not be at war forever. Military equipment will not help us against the group of poverty. If the President wishes to quell extremist thought within his federal Federation, then the best antidote may be the economic prosperity. And there's quite a few comments for me to go down with Shushkin and the Sibir Federation, as well as like do Sibir, Sibir Punk or something like that. So, uh, I asked you guys yesterday which route we should go down for corporations for which state. We have Phoenix, of course, Sibir, Titan, and the people. So, overall, there's actually quite a bit of support for me at the time of this recording to go with Sibir, so that's why we're going down that way. And actually, and some of you guys said it was pretty cool that we have a map of Russia here, which is really actually really awesome. But, uh, look how large it is. You only see a portion of it, but... So here we are, Novosibirsk. We obviously are them, so we can't really take ourselves over. But apparently, as someone did say, if you give yourself 4,000 political power, you can just pretty much straight up annex everyone in Siberia, which would be kind of cool. We can do Omsk, we can do, uh, Tumen, Tomsk, uh, Tumen is over here. So if we want to use political power to influence them, we need to look at Takeover. Uh, they are mostly aligned with the people. Uh, Russia is aligned with the Phoenix. Kamrovo is aligned with the Phoenix as well, but Tomsk, they're aligned with Sabir. Something that we also like as well, so maybe we'll increase their loyalty, because right now, they're kind of hurting us a little bit, so... Ooh, spend 35 power to get more loyalty. Well, let's see if we can do that. Look at that! Okay, so we spent some, 30, some political power, which I don't like spending, but it is what it is. I wonder if we can just straight up annex these guys in Tomsk. That'd be kind of cool. Hmm. These guys do not have a lot of loyalty to us, but that's okay. So, Sabir, uh, action is a 35 day cooldown. We can increase their power even more. But if. This, I want to try this at least once. So, with Tomsk, maybe we can try to take them over. Our ideological similarity with this country gives us a bonus of negative 4.46, but it's green. Our corp, Mega Corp's power and loyalty grant us a bonus of 7.5. So, base is 5, so maybe we can increase political power. I want to at least try this once. So, it's going to take a lot, but maybe we can uh, just d directly take them over. We'll see. We'll definitely have to wait and see. But at the Siberian player, so overall, someone did recommend we should go with overtures to the people. The people of the Federation are restless. They look upon the power of the junta and the corporations without worry, with worry and apprehension. In order to placate the people, this is not to say we will let them have free reign, but a lighter touch is perhaps a smarter way forward. First, we should lessen the restrictions on the press. Allowing for a freer press will give the people a way to see the benefits of our rule, of course. The proper content restrictions will still apply. After all, it would be foolish to allow the slander of the Federation. Second, we will need to give the unions a slightly larger decree of autonomy. Giving the workers a state-sponsored union to air the grievances to allow us will allow us to better keep them under wraps. These unions will, of course, only have so much power ultimately answer to the government. Finally, there must also be a general de-escalation of repression against the middle class in particular, while they will still need to be restricted. A lessening of restrictions will grant us better support amongst them, and will therefore allow us to better control the working class. Very good. 
Now, before we let, let time go on, I was going to infiltrate the cells and get rid of these agitators. Uh, we can close this one. I'd love to scavenge for loot, and I'd love to do more of this stuff, but we're doing pretty well on that already. We don't need to see this. And the lair of the Siberian bear would be really good as well. But we got. We, I think this is probably best to get rid of these guys first. Um, uh, let's do the factories. So, in the lair of the Siberian bear, the cleaning staff of the Siberian building had done a heck of a job, Grigory Langmark thought. Langmark thought. It seemed that the Polish touched every aspect of the building inch by inch, or the polish. A receptionist ushered him into a waiting room. I apologize on behalf of the Sibir Corporation, she said, apologetic. However, our executive officer is tending to a vital guest. I hope you'll understand. The identity of the guest was apparent. It was none other than the notable or notorious. If one had been in certain government circles, Mayor of Barnall, Langemach, Langemach, had chosen today in hopes of slighting the mayor, but alas, however, the contract the government shall sign with Sibir Corporation will bring them closer together. Langemach smirked. Pokrishkin knew how these corporations worked. The bottom line was far more crucial to the livelihood of these corp companies than a frequent visit from an eccentric actor politician. He took a seat and waited, checking his watch in between reading magazines sponsored by the Sabir. Most of them were agriculture related, but most of them depicted golden fields of wheat, the grains undulating under the gentle wind. He waited for clothes to an hour before the receptionist returned, wearing a sheepish smile on her face. I'm sorry for the delay, sir, she said. Our guest just left. The executive officer will see you now. About time, Langemach said. Take me to him, if you please. Certainly, sir. With the scratches of pens and thumps of, a, of stamps. A new deal is signed. Cool. Increase our leanings towards federalism by a moderate amount and workers reports of worker agitation classified. Multiple suspects are currently under investigation for disturbing the peace, inciting violence, and for multiple charges of conspiracy. Threat posed by these terrorists is unknown at this time. However, suspects appear to be involved in Narodniks. Narodniks, and appears to have the capacity to support or successfully perform industrial sabotage across numerous locations. Suspects discovered putting up posters inciting anti-government propaganda, and several suspects discovered distributing weapons to various workers amongst the population. After interrogation, several of these workers informed our agents that the suspects wished for the workers to overthrow the bourgeoisie and bring about the workers' revolution. Several workers were given components capable of constructing an explosive, rough de explosive device, roughly equivalent to C4. No suspects were captured and escaped to unknown locations. Conclusion. It is clear that terrorists among our population are targeting working class demographics, and these terrorists appear to be aligned with Bolshevik organizations. Further investigation is required, but it is recommended that the suspects described on the following page be located and arrested immediately. Industrial sabotage could prove fatal while our government is so reliant on a handful of industrial centers. We cannot let this get out of hand. Okay, Bink. My apologies. My cat wanted to be let out of the room. I don't want to do this, but... Go and scavenge for a little bit more loot. And after that, that might be the final time we do it, just because we have loot. We could raid, but I do want to maybe get some more influence over these people as well. I think that'd be really cool. It's going to take a lot for us to take them out, though. A lot of PP. So, yeah, at this point, we've got to keep as much PP as possible. Incident report. Narnik Sabotage. Classified reference. Document 7A to... 7F, which detail in-depth profiling of top suspects and photos of the crime scene. At 1100 hours, a worker employed in a Phoenix arm manufacturing plant detonated an IED wall and break. The worker in question, named Ivan Yahontov, Yahontov, yeah, was seriously injured in the blast, but was located and detained by civilian authorities. Yahontov had been associating with suspected Narodniks for several weeks prior to the bombing and appears to have collaborated with two other individuals, Sergei Preobrazinsky died in the explosion, and Alexei Turgenev, reported sick day of the incident, was not found in his residence when investigated. The manager of the manufacturing plant was not harmed and is quite incensed by what he sees as the government's failure to contain the Narodnik threat. Current estimates place damages at a cost equivalent of $2 million of... The two million U.S. dollars. There are 17 reported deaths and over 30 wounded, of which 17 are in critical condition. Currently, five employees of the plant are not accounted for, with a site too damaged and obstructed to allow further searches until a later point in time. Conclusion: The Narodnik threat was greater than previous expected. Predictions. Multiple requests for greater resources and more, for more extensive training have been filed at this time. Phoenix has also requested compensation for damages sustained by the blast. They may have, they have won the battle, but we will win the war, my friends. Absolutely. Cool. We shall see what happens, and always an even trade. The Federation is, like many other polites... Polities a collectively arrange upon their interests of many classes, corporations, unions, and the government all vie for supremacy within a system that allows these forces to coalesce and compromise. As such, the Federation's political system is always a zero-sum game. A move made somewhere can never be reverted. It is a harsh system, but politics have been pitiless and cruel since the beginning of time. As such, the president's decision will matter in a lot of ways, but we cannot foretell what the future holds for the Federation. All he must do is to live with the consequences of his actions should they arise. Novo Sibir's can all take. Gaze at the future and a cautious optimism rises in the hearts of its citizens. Someday, what Bukharan had built as a center of, Buh of Siberia 
shall be the beating heart of a new Russian political system. The Daily Broadcast. Mikhail walked back to his home in Novosibirsk from the market. On his way out, he had stopped by the news newsstand on the corner of the street and purchased the newest copy of the Novosibirsk Gazette. He had been pleasantly surprised to see a new, privately owned broadsheet at the stall. He had grown so used to, to the state-run press and his patriotic drivel. Now, though, he could properly enjoy an unbiased paper run by right-thinking Russians telling it like it is. Sitting at the fireplace with a cup of tea and a newspaper felt quite nostalgic for him. On the front page was a picture of striking workers surrounded by corporate security guards the headline read, Severe workers strike blood on the streets. Intrigued, he read through the report. Apparently, workers at a severe plant went on strike for higher wages and ended up rioting and killing several severe guards. A unit of the army had to be called in to quell the strike and it ended with several dead and wounded. Mikhail couldn't help but be shocked. For the life of him, he could not understand what would compel these workers to strike, let alone so violently. Life was better than it had been in Novosibirsk, and ever. He had plenty of food on the table every month. His business was doing very well. His wife and her friends had all the time in the world to gossip to their heart's content. Life was good in the Federation. So why were the workers so insistent on complaining, after all? If I'm doing good, so they should. So should they, right? Towards more collectivism? Okay. And uh, securing the factories. Classified reference. Documents 2 seen. Documents A3 to 3K. Documents A3 3A to 3K display in depth files and descriptions of detailed gnarled nicks and several workers allied with them. Document 2C displays a map of known terrorist hideouts cleared by government authorities along with locations under immediate investigation. 48 hours ago, several gnarled nick agitators were identified and tracked down by our agents in the field. Alongside information extracted from. Ivan Yahonotov. A series of raids were conducted. Over 17 arrests have been made against the Narodniks and their allies. Among these arrests were also severely agitated workers distributed weapons by the Narodniks. While not all the currently arrested terrorists have been interrogated, it was clear that the Narodniks were targeting working class demographics with propaganda and uh, had already succeeded in converting workers to the cause. Currently, no Narodnik sympathizers are still being brought in and investigated. Arrests and interrogations are predicted to continue for the next several weeks until the safety of our industry can be guaranteed. Conclusion. It is believed that the Narodniks' capacity to perform industrial sabotage and weaken our government have been, have been substantially impacted by the series of arrests and raids conducted by our forces. The Narodniks will likely not target factories for some time until they believe government surveillance of factory workers has diminished. It has been requested that this investigation be made a low-priority operation due to the deceased threat of our industry. The Narodniks shall prey upon our workers no more. Very good. To get more daily political power, organization, stability, war, sport, output. Yes, please. Infiltrate the cells within the Narodniks. It was a stormy night in Novosibirsk as Anton took a seat. The other Narodniks were talking to each other, but he wanted to lay low. Barely any background checks. Did the Narodniks expect him, or were they just that incompetent? As an undercover agent of the SB, Anton hoped he wasn't being fed false information. Immediately after sitting down, a man wearing an old army uniform entered the room, differing in age compared to the mostly young students who made up the Narodniks cell. Good evening, comrades, said the older man. I am pleased to welcome our newest recruit, Anton Levitsky. To the revolution, as you know, our fight against a tyrannical Alexander Pokrushkin is only just the beginning. The Narodniks as a whole have been seen much success, yet ourselves done little to assess the the rest of our camaraderie. If the revolution is to succeed, we must aim for larger targets. Like what, said Anton, turning on his audio recorder. The army has stepped up their game and we have become a massive priority for the Novosibirsk government. I'm sure you know of the many rail lines across the Aw River, said the commander. Taking down an entire bridge will have Novosibirsk cut in half for months. Anton grimaced while the other now next cheered, if I may ask, commander. But where are we going to get enough explosives to destroy the bridge and who's going to do it? Looking around, we don't have seem very... Qualified, Anton said. The commander smiled. We have an excellent amount coming in from our supplier. And, and Anton, you applied saying that you are a demolitions expert in the Red Army, did you not? I think you'll be perfect for the job. Supervised, of course. Looks like I'm blowing up bridge, blowing up a bridge for the Narodniks then. It, what happens if you are seen as a terrorist by the government and you aid, you're a spy but you're aiding in the terrorism actions? What happens? Hmm. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But our destiny made manifest. Hopefully get more political power so we can take over the people. Novus Obiris has spent the last arduous months fighting in its internal issues. Drugs, crimes, social agitators, but these problems have been solved and our position has become strengthened. Instead of looking in, it is time to look out from our current borders. Generals have already been ordered to start drawing up their war plans in preparation for the battles that they are to fight. With the fight of the Federation's army under the command, our conquest of Central Siberia is all but assured. For the Falcon's wings are no longer clipped, and it is time for the Federation to take flight. Sabotaging the saboteurs. Uh, let's go ahead and do... Uh, schools are doing schools yet? I want to make sure everything's at least going up. We could probably do academic base. At least let that go up at least a little bit. As much as I love power tools, it's going up by five a month. So, agriculture is nice. Do schools. I love to raid, but we have other things to do. Such as this. I really want to be able to annex them. That'd be really cool, but I don't think... I just don't think we'll be able to get there just in time. Maybe I wasted all this political power, but oh well. 
sabotaging the saboteurs. Anton stood on the riverside near the bridge as he toyed with the fuse. He was a Narodnik's new detonation man, and while the commander was surprised to supervise him, that didn't stop Anton from sneaking into the bomb storage room last night to defuse the bombs. The Narodniks would soon be sorely disappointed. Well, Anton, looks like everything is ready, said Pavel, his cell commander, still wearing that old uniform. Taking out a lighter, Anton. Ooh, Matai, hello. Oh, my bad. I took a deep breath and lit the fuse. We should probably run farther back. There's a clearing a ways away that should lead to a good escape. And the group of officers awaiting to arrest them, Anton thought to himself, he couldn't risk his terrorists getting another chance, even though it was so soon since they joined. Are you kidding? And missing this beautiful explosion? We can head to that ridge instead, P replied Pavel, and the others agreed. Wait, but it was too late. The others were already following the commander. Anton cursed under his breath and ran after them. Reaching the ridge, Pavel frowned. Anton, why isn't the bridge exploded yet? Did the fuse break? Another Narodnik pointed to the bridge. Commander, the SB, we've got to get out of here. Looking at the bridge, it appears that the officers had realized that the Narodnik were not falling for Anton's trap and said, heading over to cut the fuse. Crap, we've got to go before they see us. Anton froze. If he shouted, the other SB agents might be able to end it all right there, but some of the Narodniks were armed. Anton looked back to see some of the Narodniks running and the rifle in the man's arms next to him. I'll have another chance. Oh boy. Oh boy. God, I wish we could get more command power. 0.38 every day is so bad. So bad. End of the line. Commander Pavel Pace between each and every Narodnik member. His head down. It appears we have a spy in our midst. I'm sure we all have our suspicions. Pavel stopped in front of Anton, looking him in the eye. Anton, how do you think the SP knew we were going to target that bridge? I don't know, sir. Perhaps... The commander interrupted. Anton, the SP came out of a clearing. The same clearing you wanted us to escape into. Is that just a coincidence? Anton gul gulped, pressing down the button to signal the ambush. It was time. He just hoped that Narodnik didn't shoot him on sight. A crash came from upstairs at the beginning of the raid. SP agents flooded into the room, down the stairs, before Pavel knew what was happening. Anton had already grabbed the pistol out of Pavel's belt, holding it in his head. Or Pavel Orlov, you are under arrest for treason against the Federation. The commander left. Looks like my suspicions were correct then. You answered more directly than I would have thought. Comrades, the time has come. Let's show we don't go down without a fight. The other Narodniks looked at him. Then to Anton, then to the SP agents, slowly dropping their weapons with their hands raised. The students having no wish to actually die for the revolution. It looks like you're coming with us, Pavel. Please face towards the wall. One by one, they will all fall. Oh, oh, we need to do the final raid. God dang it. Oh, yeah, maybe I should have not done Tomsk. Maybe I should have saved up our political power for like Chernefs. Uh, Chernyevsky or Siberian Black Army or something like that. Oh well. God, you get command power so slowly, so slowly. Thirteen. Oh, point four one. At least we got slightly more horsepower. Hopefully, we should ever uh, focus on two very, 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 very soon. Maybe we should not invest in the Siberian plan too much then. Oh well, it is what it is, and it's done. What's done? Three more days left. Not too bad. Hey, thirty more political power. Hopefully we'll get more, too. Come on, keep taking more pressure. More pressure. Nice. Launch the final raid. Gang busting. Chief Glink, his eyes, his steely eyes, glittering in the light of the projector, tapped his baton against the screen for the upteenth time. The smoky room was full of serious face SP agents. Little fire fi uh, fireflies of burning cigarettes adding an eerie atmosphere to the dark room. The safe house was large and well fortified, constructed in a hidden bunker, constructing constructed in Bukharin's time. The narrowed next had chosen well. This would be one heck of a tough nut to crack. I'll be frank with you, said Glinko. His voice flat and grim. More than a few of us are going to die breaking into this fortress. From our experience in the uh, Altay, we know that these stairs have access to access mines, so expect the way in to be heavily mined. The door is reinforced steel, and it'll take some serious firepower to break it open. Luckily, the army will be providing what excess explosives they can. The crowd was silent. Their eyes on Glinka or scouring the battle map on the projector screen, they will be one heck of a fight. This is going to be your hardest test yet, but rely on your training and the man in front of you and behind you, and you'll see, and we'll see, this terrorist nest blown off the map. God bless you, gentlemen, and good night. Glinka dismissed the strike force. Hearts heavy with anticipation and inflamed with courage. One last battle, then we can rest easier. The Federation's destiny. As Alexander Pokrushkin stepped up to the podium and began to speak. The audience listened in rapt attention. For he had been and was now speaking of great futures to come. There was no secret, he began, that the Federation was beginning to look outward, across the borders of the limited territories that it now occupied and towards those occupied by the other statelets. Vast expanses laden with the resources, people, and strategic positions, expanses would, in time, fall under the Federation's control. It was only natural, he continued, that the Federation, with Novosibirsk at its heart, possessed a special destiny not seen elsewhere in Siberia. It was the largest city east of the Urals, formed a critical junction at the primary route of travel travel across Siberia and lay in a major region of development of Bukharin Spice Siberian plan. Was it not, he concluded, therefore logical that the Federation would leverage those advantages to reclaim lands rightfully belonging to it. Further, having accomplished that goal, was it not similarly logical that the Federation would continue expansion all over all of Siberia? Of course it was, Pokrushkin thundered. It was not only logical, it was inevitable. It was right. The Federation had a destiny, a right to unite Siberia, and it would do so. And on that great day, would it stop? No. He said decisively, 
and will continue pursuing its final destiny, dominion over all of Russia. When he was finished, all applauded. All agreed that it had been a fine speech to it. Many were doubtful that the dream presented could be delivered. Would they be proven wrong in due time? They hoped so. An impossible goal? Well, it must be done regardless. And this will be done within five days, which is kind of nice, actually. So, two, ten, oh boy. We could really use more political power, though. Hey, 2.23 is not bad, though. But now we're going to lose more. Spring Rapsputitsa. As winter snows give way to spring thaws, and as nature comes back to life in the many forests and fields of central Siberia, so too have the armies. Terrain deemed unusable in winter months are now fully accessible in spring. Roads, once imperious to the flow of men or machines, are finding themselves clogged with the movement of soldiers and vehicles. As tensions rise and armies mobilize, it's clear that the war is on the horizon, and if we're to emerge victorious in the struggles ahead, we cannot afford to rest on our laurels. Not bad. The final raid. Luca winced, ears ringing, his el helmet suddenly extremely tight around his head. Rubble flaked off his shoulders like dandruff, dust clogging his mask. He shook his head, attempting to clear his senses. Everything stood still for a moment, a crystal, a perfect crystal eternity that was shattered by the slap on the back plate. Luca suddenly surged forwards. Kalashnikov held to the ready. The concrete tunnels were light, tight and difficult to fight in, but the breaking, breaching blast of the SP men had discharged to just stun the Narodniks for the crucial moment needed to take them by surprise. Luca's gun chattered in the distinctive Kalashnikov's language, spitting death at shaking communists. Bullets flew back at Luca and his team, and around Graze a shoulder already wounded once by the narrow Nixon Alte. Look at ignore the pain. And he and the SB assault team began to clear the bunkers room by room, tunnel by tunnel. It was hard, grueling work, and by the time they had reached the final stretch of the corridor, ten of the assault force were dead. Finally, Luca and the assault troopers stood before the command center door. It was predictably reinforced steel, and the demolitions team had already begun to set up a charge. Luca took the opportunity to catch his breath. Around him, the other SB men did not did the same. Sucking in the stale, dusty air of the bunker, after a moment the rest was over, the charges detonated. This time Luca ignored his frazzled senses and rushed inside, shouting for the occupants surrender. Bad word, bad word, shouted a man covered in pasty white dust, blood trickling from his nose. We're done, we give up, just stop killing us, please. The ringleader, six in total, and the, of the Narodniks, were brought into SB custody. The Red Menace of Novosibirsk finally brought to heel another blow against the failed ideologies. Beautiful. And glorious. Four. Oh, come on. Oh, 1.23. We need more, please, please, please. I just want to directly annex Tomsk. The rights of man? Do they, do men deserve rights? They have that many more divisions, but they do have more, which is not very good for us. Um, at this point, just go do that so we can actually add more stuff to here. There we go. Training, train, 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 train. What are we missing? Just five things of artillery. That's not too bad, actually. Horizontal design. We're getting Kalashnikovs, which is pretty good. At this point, I'm going to go and start doing uh, Strategic Theorem. That interesting is pretty good. Nuke Atmosphere, huh? There we go. Wait, right, someone going to war here? Huh. Well, come on. I think, you know what? I'll be honest here. Like, if. So, I think this is the fourth time we're doing it. So, uh, if this doesn't work well, I'm just going to give myself the political power back just because. Yeah, this is probably a really waste of political power to do this. I'll probably just give it back because I want to do it, be successful with it. And if I have to, you know, I don't want to necessarily say cheat, but like, I want to at least be, you know, do it and get it done. Let's do one. But spring training. It was the third straight day of combat exercises, and Private Ivanov was already sick of them. Crawling along the fourth floor, the private was slowly inching himself forward. The pre-attack plan had been clear. There was an enemy four position that needed to be taken, and qu taken quickly. And the left-hand squad of a flying wedge, he was but one of half dozen soldiers crawling amidst the Siberian taiga. Cradling his rifle, he waited with nervous energy. As the lieutenant blew his whistle, the young private launched himself forward with the rest of the platoon as machine guns sprayed death a foot off the ground in controlled bursts. Twenty minutes later, part of the platoon sat on the far side of the enemy position, much of it Ivanov included, deemed casual. Turning his attention away from the exercise and back towards his fellow squadmates, the private turned back into the conversation. All these exercises? What do you think, Ivanov? Ivanov fixed the speaker with a dirty look. What the bad word do I think? Use your brain, man. The Falcon clearly thinks we're going to be fighting a war soon enough. And you better not get me bad word killed. Federation self. Populous, forward thinking, order, and stability. I like that one. We want more uh, command power right now. While expanding outwards and reclaiming those parts of Russia under opposing governments is well and good if we do not work toward maintaining order within liberated areas and secure them under our control, then ensuring disorder and arrest may very well harm production or worse lead to an end of our grip in outlying regions. An increased garrison and bolster police presence would do wonders for the power we wield in the areas we take from other governments in Russia, as well as ensure that nobody dares to oppose our plans regardless of ideology. The sooner order and stability return throughout the land under our rule, whether recently acquired or a loyal part of their state, the sooner our good and steady governance can be used to make our principles a reality, which is a good thing. And as we're watching Kemerovo try to defend itself against the evils of Tomsk, which is kind of why I just want to straight up annex them, but it's probably not going to happen. I mean, we're trying really hard here with it, but you can only get so much command power at a time, which really, really sucks. I'm glad it's only 25 instead of 30, like the political power thing, but oof. 
What do we have? Oh, operations? Homecoming? We lose political power. Arm XP war support. Oh, we go straight to war with them. And Kamarovo? A rascal. Orochia? I don't want to spend this, though. For 21 days, we get more... Oh. Okay, so I okay, so like I said earlier, I think I'm just gonna give myself political power, and we can do this whole annexing warlord stuff later on. Cause thirty percent, I mean that's like so much. So I'm sorry to do this, but I think we've done it four times. So that's kind of a waste what we just did there. So my apologies, my big old apologies. Uh, so we're we're done with that. I'm gonna wait till the next stage and probably do stuff like the free aviators and stuff like that. So my apologies. I just I'm learning this with you guys. So. Um. I was just going to spend on this stuff anyway, so... Hmm. Oh, I guess we might as well do this one. Well, that's kind of a waste, but whatever. My apologies once again. I see... Hmm. There you go. So, yeah, I, I don't like using cons commands, but, you know, if... That just takes too, a little bit too long, and it makes sense why, but... I should really wait till we get the regional stage so we have more economic pressure. We have more stuff like that. I should have just waited. My bad. At this point, we just might keep doing the same. Let them focus over there. And actually, that's not too bad. Yeah, that opens up a border way more. But if they're struggling down here, that's actually really good for us then. Or was that just a border raid? No, they're actually at war with them. So it's actually really good. As long as Kimrobo can hold... We actually might be able to go to war with... Actually, we should have gone to war with them first, then. Order and Stability, very nice. Industrial P Preservation Act. Uh, oh, yeah, let's do temporary military governors. Unfortunately, we can't trust newly liberated territories to not fall right back into extremism if given the opportunity through a civilian government as such. We will pass a law to tr place any and all new lands under a temporary military administration to maintain order and eradicate extremist ideals before true integration into the Federation. The military governors will be given absolute authority to deal with any suspected treasonous activities, barring direct orders from the government in Nova Subirsk against specific actions. Although, this will last only as long as absolutely necessary. This is unlikely to become popular among the people of such territories, so we must work Warn the military governors to avoid upsetting them further if possible. Good. Actually, we could raid them, but at this point, we're literally going to go to war with them very soon, so it doesn't even matter. Cool. Are we winning? Are you winning, son? Not against the capital, which kind of sucks, but... uh, You guys can head out of there and help them out, probably. We should have some planes, too, right? Yeah. There you go. Now that should be doing some damage. And that should help minimize our losses, which would be good. Hey, we have a division done too. Look at that. So yeah, like once again, I apologize. Like I should have really waited for that stuff, and you know, for trying to give us. Are they doing a last stand? Huh? No, they're not. But uh, spending political power and stuff. So, but like I said, I'm I'm still learning. Like, not every Russian warlord has a unique, you know, little modifier in the game. But man, I don't know. It's just I'm learning every single time I play one of these warlords. Every single time. So whenever we play this nation again, we'll kind of know what's going on. Kaya, I like to administer Japan. Cool. Oh, nice job, guys. We have six divisions, and I think it's time to go to war with these guys. This is the absolute best time to take these guys out. Uh, 70 days. I think I'm going to wait, actually. Give it two weeks. Is it two weeks time? Eh, it's probably best to just wait. Uh, let's see. Institute Secular Authority. Church and State. How do you do one of these, then? Oh, I guess I have to wait with them. Um, Church and State. Allowed governmental authority on a religious basis due to the dualistic nature of the Orochian state. Their ability to rule over the people in the name of God is unreasonable and tyrannical. We must put a stop to it now that we control their territory. Okay. Can we actually raid any... Mm. Omsk? Uh, actually, we might be able to raid Omsk since we're busy doing other stuff first. I don't want to forget about this either. There you go. Not bad. And then maintain the trans siberian Railway... Stamp up the embers. Ooh, resistance growth goes down. That goes down less damage to garrisons, but it hurts our political power. The Patriots Federation. Yeah, let's get some more command power. The Patriots Federation. Our efforts to convince the people of the need to support the state continues. It's been proposed that we communicate to the people the exceptional nature both of Russia and the Federation. And in doing so, encouraging newfound patriotism within them for their unifications ahead. In addition, by focusing on those particular exceptional properties of our state, such as independent and optimistic spirit, our provision of voting rights to those who give honorable service, and more, we can shape this patriotism into its most valuable form. Good. Can we raid them? Oh, they got raided. Oh, that sucks. What a waste of time, then. 
So that improved it by five days. That's that's honestly not much. I should have just done other stuff, but okay, whatever. Church and state. Oh, uh, Sokolov stepped out of the car, making sure to avoid stepping in anything that may be liable to make his day unpleasant while reaching his home. Well, he thought with some bitterness, more unpleasant at least. He had gone here at least a week ago, but he had already been in, on the losing end of an argument between the varying factions of the and Orochia, the once theocratic government led by the old believer Ivan Z Zavoloko. At first, Sokolov had expected the new job to be easy. How hard could dealing with a couple backwards peasants really be? Very, very difficult already. He had to deal with the reality that he had no legitimacy. These people did not choose him as an outsider. Sokolov, no matter his personal beliefs, was a member of the Federation government, a distant, unknowable collection of bureaucrats and politicians who knew nothing about them. This Sokolo Sokolov resented, if only because he had been briefed a significant amount by Z Zavokolo. Zavoloko, who in his wisdom thought it would be important for Sokolov to understand the needs of the people. Apparently, Sokolov thought with bitterness, some didn't think that was enough. He sighed. Perhaps he was being too negative. He had, over the course of the next couple, last couple weeks, been successful in removing some of the incompetent administrators under Zavoloko, who by and large were preachers and not bureaucrats. At the very least, it would show that Sokolov was trying to make an effort. Besides, the cash would begin to flow uh, to Orochia soon to show how valuable united centralized Russia could be. Perhaps Sokolov thought for the first time in days these people can learn to trust again. Hopefully Sokolov thought I didn't get that much hate mail that day. Nice. I wonder if we can go to do the next one. Because if these guys are stuck here together and their divisions can't reinforce that well, well, it's pretty good for us. And a Verona conference ends. Uh, hybridize the state apparatus. Look to our roots. Just a giant's rural urban base. Oh, I like that one. Encourage forward thinking. Clouds gather on the horizon, and if the Federation is to emerge victorious from the war should to come, we must not only ensure that our people possess faith in and a desire for our eventual victory, but also that they work to advance it. To that end, we will work to properly educate them about the future that could be, the Russia that could be, if they only work for it. Expected increases in civil participation and work ethic cannot but support our goals, economic and otherwise, and should therefore be pursued. Alright everyone, right now we are beginning to raid, preparing a raid against the Republic of Pavlodar. Hopefully we do well, but... At the same time, we can go to do another operation, which we'll probably just go ahead and do against other people. They refuse tribute, and we... Oh. We do it down here. Yeah, 1v1. I think we can still win, since we are using normal infantry versus their militia. Let's hope we do well. I hope we do well. Hope you guys... Hope hope you guys hope that we do well. No, neck is good. Oh. Alright. Scavenge for more loot. Thank you. Might as well. As we're still trying to core this area, and oh, hopefully we do well. Looking on the bright side. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, you're listening to Radio Free Siberia, the best news for the people of Siberia. I'm your host, Koryavov Nikitovich, but you can call me Nicholas for short. They say it's because I look like Sir Nicholas, but it's not true. I swear. Today. I am here to discuss certain criticisms of the current rule of our country. Now, now, I believe in free speech, but I'm sure that certain intellectuals are slandering our government, and by God, I'm going to come to its defense. The biggest slanderous lie is that our government is cynical. That is just a bold-faced lie. Our government is not cynical, it's pragmatic. You see, these famous philosophers, they make these funny little words like cynical and corporatization uh, in order to slander the Federation, but let's be real here. When, when has a philosopher ever done something for you? Say what you want about the Federation, but it has brought numerous people out of poverty, brought economic development, and brought them order. Sure, maybe there's a little bit too heavy-handed, but hey, I'm willing to sacrifice a bit of my freedom for the sake of a better future. The second, and the one I find the most offensive, is that our Federation is destined for failure and that we're being too weak to get anything done. That is not only wrong, it is offensive. To the leaders and generals of this country, who have sacrificed countless man-hours to just keep you and I safe from the hordes that lay beyond our borders. We have a strong economy, strong leaders, and strong soldiers who are going to be even made stronger by the first two. And the Federation will be made even stronger as the years go by as economic development increases continuously. According to some analysts, we may even become stronger than Germany when taking into account reunification and economic development. Now to my fellow patriots. I leave you with a good little song that some of you may remember. It's a little different from how you remember, but hey, it may be better for you that way. Wide is my motherland, a rural urban base. If we remain strong, stable, and united for the challenges we face, both now and in the future, we must ensure that our people feel a sense of true community. Currently, within the Federation, there is an acknowledged spirit and experience and outlook between our rural communities and our industrialized urban centers. We must correct this. A campaign of education with specific focus on appealing to the shared experiences of both communities it will be commissioned. In doing so, we will ensure that we speak to members of both, show them the experiences of the other, and unite them all behind the state uh, for the tribulations ahead. Construction speed goes up by 10% as well as efficiency cap and output. Great. Rate successful. That's exactly what we want. And let's get some more equipment. Yes, please. We did very, very well. Who are you? Ivan Tadasov. He looked really awesome with his glasses and a mustache. Man, I wish I could grow a mustache. I am so jealous of people who can grow a mustache. Sometimes. Did they actually... Okay. Oh, they... Oh, they got their territory back. 
treasure. Oh, even 75 political power. Now we can be able to probably do some good stuff here then. Uh, but honestly, I'm going to wait to the original state, like I said before. It's just not worth doing it yet. So let's go ahead and go to war with Tomsk. Capacity is not bad. Uh, consumer goods, might as well. Construction speed, I love that one. I see, yeah, let's go with that one too. Uh, how are we looking for this, actually? We do want to save some political power for our base. And by base, I mean, um, coring. So, uh, what am I looking at? I mean, yeah, I think it'll be... Oh, it actually went down, look at that, it actually went down. So, let's wait for that. Novus Obiersk... Oh, Pavlodar is not down here, huh? That is very, very weird. Please give me one second here. Bink, what do you expect? My apologies. Oftentimes, when there's like a little bit of a break in the video, or I just stop talking or something, it's because I had to let my cat out of the room. And it happened twice this episode, which is very weird. Um, but honestly, yeah, 24%. It's going down. It seems very odd, but whatever. Did we do... What are you... Oh, that's good. That's good. Good, 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 good. Um, what do we want to do? I think I want to save to core stuff. Oh, I want to... I remember what I wanted to see. This thing. No. It was... This one. Uh, looking very good on consumer goods. Construction speed is looking very good as well. So, anything for construction speed and... Cons How are you winning? How bad is Tomsk right now? Holy crud. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How, how are you losing to Kemerovo? How are you losing to them? Shostakovich, what are you... Oh, they're out of manpower. I mean, I guess that would do it. If we could get Tomsk faster than these, can, these people can, that'd be really good, but we'll see. But I guess after that, we'll do the Industrial Preservation Act. Industry is a critical part of waging any war. For the factories keep the men armed, and unarmed men don't wage war very well. However, at the current rate, our industrial base will be unable to keep up with our expansion. And thinning line supply lines might even mean more death or defeat for our armies. As such, the Industrial Preservation Act has been proposed to keep the maintenance of our current factories going and increase the speed with which new factories are constructed. This act will allow us to industrialize further and therefore maintain the current rate of reunification of Russia. And there's little doubt that the faster Russia is reunified, the better. They're much better. Much, much, much better. Attrition fighting, thank you. Alright, I guess we're just gonna go straight on in then. I want you guys to go and go straight for Tomsk. If we could capture Tomsk and destroy them that way, that'd be really extremely good. Uh, then I want you to go to there, and then there, and then maybe there. Actually, go up there. Uh, get there first, if you can. And go up to... Maybe there. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe that'd be enough. I don't know. I really don't know. Construction speed... Consumer goods. I don't want to lose stability. That's only 35 political power. That's all. Very nice. Keep going, trucks. Hey, Hitler's dead. Oh, look at that. You probably won't be able to win. Okay. Keep going, guys. You're doing a great job. Not bad. All right. Oh, hello. Who are you? 2v1, we should have some air superiority as well, hopefully. Oh, uh, Germany is popping out. Well, four Germanys are popping out of Germany. So it begins. You guys are doing pretty darn well. Maybe not great. You guys hold for now. Hold, hold, hold. Don't need to waste on this lies like that. You guys are still okay, because we want to get to the capital quickly. Um, yeah, if we take the capital, that might be enough. Chaos and Ocelan, that's nice. Uh-oh. Come on. God, Hoi 4 can lag so hard sometimes, man. Look at that. Oh, boy. Keep moving up, keep moving up. we got to get the capital. Uh, anything else here? Not too much, no. Oh, got the, there goes Himmler. Cool. Now, this forces these guys to focus up here, which is fine with me. Where's the uprising? You go straight into there, then. And you actually help them out. English Civil War begins. Nice. You should be able to beat those guys up pretty nicely. And let's go read the next one. Maintain the Trans-Siberian Railway. The Trans-Siberian Railway serves as an artery of the region, a vital connection between the most critical cities and towns to the continued operation of our government. Letting it fall into disrepair would 
be more than simply a mistake, as it could be fatal to our plans with the ease of transport for our soldiers and support for our supply lines vanishing if it falls too deeply into disrepair. What's more, much of the economy, both local and national, is dependent on the continued success of the railway. We must immediately set about repairing those parts in need of it and restoring it to peak condition, as well as maintaining it well into the future to ensure it does not fall into a similar position. Probably pretty smart, but we've got to do either one of these first. Uh, it's a cost. Apparatus is the apparatus. Or looking to our roots. I'm not really sure which one we want to do. It doesn't really matter too much, but maybe I want to do looking to our roots. A decision must be made on the construction of our organs of state, and has been proposed that we focus on strengthening the, our institutions along the lines of foundational practices and reinforcing federalist principles within them. This is clearly the optimal choice. The Federation was established on strong roots of the control of democracy and federalist practices, and we cannot permit the compromise of these for any reason as such threatens the overall identity of the state. Despite the concerns of some, our state will remain secure by remaining true. Or right, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. So, hybridized state, huh? I'll go looking to our roots, why not? I'm not sure that's good or bad, but it is what it is. Serbs rise up. Thank you, Serbs. And we got him. We got him. We got him. I can't believe it worked. Yes, thank you, Kemerovo. Thank you for being our punching bag. Or the punching bag for these guys. It's very good. Let's go ahead and add another unit here, too. That worked out really well for us. Disabling or disbanding the salons? Yeah, why not? Absorbing their design bureau? Sure, why not? Look at this Siberian plan, it's still pretty darn good. And if you can hear some things in the background, that's most likely the wind whipping through my room right now because I left the window open. So, not too bad. The South African War, we love South Africa. Exploding. Kaboom. Aquamem. An ultimatum. Oh, from Krasnoyarsk? Wait. That's a bit odd, but okay. You can go shuck a fat one, Krasnoyarsk. Uh, since we're down here anyways, we'll probably just do him and get to him back. Um, what the heck? Kemerovo. Uh, okay. Is there any way I can use this first? Pavlodar? No. How many more days do we have for this? Nine? Support weapons are nice. Let's get some of that too, because we can. Good. This will distract him, hopefully, a little bit more too. Adjusting, Nikolai Kamov sat at his desk looking over the designs of the latest helicopter design. It was coming along well if he said so himself, but to say it was up to the same level of quality similar designs that add under the Siberian Republic would be a lie. He sighed, rubbing at his tired eyes. When the Federation troops came pouring in, a few could believe it, and therefore anyone could even react. The Republic's flag, waving above Tom's, came tumbling down. It seemed to Kamov's horrid eyes that the whole experiment had failed. And the experiment's subjects, the people of Central Siberia, had undergone a change that Kamov as a scientist found shocking almost overnight. The people and their optimism, once so filled with hope and joy, had shriveled up in a rotting husk. And that new atmosphere, the atmosphere of some corporate overlord, had expanded to the research division that Kamal worked in. Although the designs remained the same, the people changed. No longer was radical experimentation allowed. Now it was all about efficiency and results. No longer would the halls of science be filled with creativity, intrigue, learning, and breakthroughs. Now, it was going to be about how to make something easier to manufacture, transport, and make in bulk. Kamal's helicopter was just one victim. We had no motivation to make the best possible, no reason to push the boundaries. Now we felt like just one more researcher in a sea of thousands, all vying for some nebulous benefit, and it ate Kamov up inside. Does optimism have a home in Russia still? A change in management. Pushkin uh, watched the tanks roll down the streets of Tomsk with bitterness in his mind and hate in his heart. No, hate wasn't the word. It was some new feeling. Some feeling that combined hate, disappointment, and fear and regret all into one single emotion that went beyond a simple noun. Perhaps this depression was a better word from all the changes that surrounded Pushkin's world. The first was seeing his second home. The humanist headquarters tapped off by soldiers denying him and his comrades. Oh, look at that. Nice. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, t denying him and his comrades entrance into the building. Your organization said the officer in charge has been outlawed, dispersed before you were dealt with. They did, and the sudden horror dawned on him that, that how bad things were going to get. A second one which was much less concrete, but just as real. The morale of the people of Tomsk had been destroyed and sucked up and spat out. Friends who weeks prior waved and shared wonderful memories of together barely looked at each other, let alone spoke. The park, once so filled with wandering, smiling faces, had been replaced by soldiers armed to the teeth. It was as if all hope, all idealism had been bleed, bled from them, just as their men had been bled on the battlefield. Pushkin sighed. Perhaps the grand experiment was never realistic. Perhaps it was just better to get your head out of the clouds and focus on the real world. Maybe these new men, with their hard faces and cold hearts, had the right idea after all. What use is survival without hope? An ultimatum from who? Was it Kemerovo? Actually, that's not too bad. We're going to come right on back then. 
Hopefully we've got a few days left for this too, so hold and go back home. Mikhail Baganov. It's good in defense. It's not great, but not bad. How many more days do we have for this one? Five. Okay, it's not terrible. Five days are not bad. Three, two, one. Oh, their divisions are gone. Good, good, good. Pavlodar. Um, I do want to do them as well, but we got to wait a little bit. Actually, look at all this stuff. We need to do an operation. Let's see what happens. We can do the Black League, maybe. Come on. Oh, they found us. Or we found them. Or something. I don't know. Now, nah, that should help them a little bit. Hey, looking to our roots, a temporary respite. The silly Shushkin sat at his mayoral desk in bar now, once again looking at the group of reports arranged in front of him and despaired. He, he had long been unhappy with the news out of Nova Sibirsk itself regarding the increased centralization of the Silovic government. And what about that meant not only for him, but for the people of the Federation? Barnow was not nearly as important as the great city itself, of course, but it was important enough, and he was important enough within it to be able to take some form of action. And that action had worked. He had been able, if only for a short while, to delay several measures focused on further increasing the degree of centralization. He knew that he should have felt joy or at least satisfaction a at such success, and yet, he did not, for he knew that though he had slowed the process, he had not and would not be able to hold it very, very long. His influence and popularity would allow him to do so for a while longer, but as you regard the reports, all he could think was about how much time he had won, and knew, and he, and how he knew it would not be much. Can it be stopped? Oh, I guess I did the wrong one. I should have went the other one, the root. I should have went to hybridize the state apparatus. That is my fault, but entice the giants. Eh, we'll do this one first. Maintain the Trans-Siberian Railway. Take a look at this, and you know what? Screw it. I'm going to increase loyalty and power here. I was... That's good looking. Eh, it's actually getting worse for us. The people, they don't have much power, but they have a lot of loyalty. Not terrible. And these guys are doing okay as well, but it's really this one that we want to help out. Loyalty? Not bad. Actually, we increased by 30, for 35 political power. The enemy's defeated. Look at that. Great. Well, we got enough for this. So if I can increase the power, not bad. Pretty darn good. If I do say so myself. Let's go to Paladar next. And see what happens with these guys. Cool. Yeah, we can scam through loot again too. Look at that. Nice. Good. 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 The Intasa Giants, the captains of industry within the corporate giants, are a critical part of the country's development, and no effort can be spared in pleasing them. It was with their support that we turned the Federation into a state truly worth of existence, and it was with their support that we will unite all of Russia under the state. To entice them into supporting us further, we will offer them some benefits to reward them for their aid up until now, such as appointment to economic positions in our government and making our taxes on them even more lenient than they already are. While this will blur the line between corporation and state further, it is that is a necessary sacrifice for leading Russia into greatness. Go and rate them. Cool. Another division. Very good. They refuse tribute. Very good. And let us begin enticing them with the sound of bullets. Might as well go to war with um, Paladar since we're down here anyway. The sole survivor. Well, they're going to have to die too. Uh, game, come on. Oh, no, no, no Paladar? Oh, well then... Ah, uh, these guys are killing each other, too. Mm, I don't like the Siberian Black Army, but I don't like the People's Revolutionary Council. Probably the Siberian Black Army, honestly. So I'll probably go with them next. This mount sucks, but still. Um, these guys would be good to kill off. Actually, Kim Revo's looking pretty good right there. I might consider taking them out first, actually. Oh, we'll see. Nice. And we'll do workers, maybe? I've not done ex expertise yet, so... Why not? Siberian Black Army, Krasnoyarsk. I kind of want to wait to see what happens over here. Uh, the Spoils of War, look at that. Very good. Nice. Oh, they're doing pretty darn well. Fantastic Giants. Uh, I guess we'll do Kemerovo next then. That's good, and I guess we'll read the next one. Stamping out the embers. There exists, in the heart of every Siberian, the flame of rebellion and idealism. Bukharin, for all of his failures as a leader of the Soviet Union, has become the Siberian Prometheus. Arising from the ashes of the communist state are thinkers versed in ideological debate and discipline, the inciters of ideals and violence, carriers of fire and innovation. The Central Siberian Republic, the culmination of this blazing passion, shared, shattered as soon as the wind blew against the course of the destination. From our sanctuary in the heart of Siberia, the Federation marched out, triumphing over the remnants of the Central Siberian Republic, for here we shall say no to the brutality of idealism, no to the senseless waste of ideology, no to the unbridled rage of inhumane passion, or human pa humane passion. No, we say to the fire that burnt around us, within us, as the soles of our boots fall upon the last streaks of ember. The days past and future are gone, there exists only the present. Good, good, good. 
Oh, we can do way more of this stuff. I like this. I want more construction speed right now, though. Even more. More, 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 more. Go right on in. If you guys could go to Kimarovo, that'd be great. That's probably all you probably actually need. Yeah, you guys go there, and then Abakan, maybe, perhaps? That'd be quite good. Oh, if you like to read about the basin, please go right ahead. Awesome. All right, intestines gi giants. Oh, uh, that's cool. Actually, we split them up like this. Actually, maybe they've already had that or originally. The three giants. With their decision to offer the corporate giants residing in a realm support and official government benefits, we'll be able to get these corporations over to our side and be able to benefit from the vast resource pool, just as they'll benefit from our official support. After all, lucrative government contracts in the newly conquered territory are the favorite of any successful mega corporation. However, based on what few resources we have at the moment, we'll only be able to throw our support behind only one of the megacorps. Each mega corporation contract, Fenix, Sabir, and Titan, will grant us a different boon, so we must choose wisely. Fenix, our military perpetrator. Sabir for economy. Nation tech giant. We're going to go Sabir for our dude over there. Thank you very much. Feda of Zemsky Sabor. Oh, look at this. Uh, stamping out of the embers. Another military factory? Great. We've got plenty of guns. Look at that. Nice. All more planes. Loads and loads and loads of planes. Now, can you raid someone? That'd be kind of nice. But I guess not. We already had a successful raid. So, sunrise uh, democracy, sunset dictatorship. When the dawn comes upon the soil of the Federation, the apparatus of state welcomes its light under the foyers and antechambers of democracy. Here, at the start of each day, the magistrates and bureaucrats serve the, pop serve the people, counting local votes, adjusting economic policies, and directing the flow of goods, all in the name of ensuring that the people are well cared for. At midday, when the civil servants go to lunch, the president and Nisilovics tour the country, seeking support, however, like the tsars, emperors, general secretaries, and premiers before him, this power was never in question. When the night falls and the earth grows dark, the security service prowls the streets of the city, seeking to root out those who oppose the righteous dictatorship. Thus is the unspoken motto of the Federation, democracy at sunrise, a monarchy at midday, and a dictatorship at the end of the day. Quiet falls over the fields of Siberia, and no whispers of deceit could be heard, not from the communists or idealists. Only the beating heart of Russia sustains, sustains, sustains its pace in the silence. Oh boy. Now, power is 100%. Now, that is nice. That's really nice. Holy crap. How are we doing with this stuff? 20 already, even before we hit the other stage. From Oh, Omsk wants to piss us off. Alright, Omsk. You claim you are filled with hate, that which will help you fight. But I don't believe that. I don't believe in your naysaying ways. And I'll do both of these two. Actually, I'll rec you're recording that too, which is good. That's good. Oh, would you look at that? An ultimatum? Prepare, prepare another raid? Oh, I like that idea. Beautiful. Give us, give us a few days so we can be here. Get some more organization. That'd be very good as well. 0.96 billion. Not bad. And let's go ahead and do that one too. Three. Two. I want to keep as much army XP for now as possible. One. Krasnoyarsk, okay? Nice. God dang it, Krasnoyarsk. Don't lose now. Don't lose. Come on, get your butts in there. Get your butts in there. Seriously, are you going to get in there or what? If, in, in any case, you guys head on over here now next. West Siberian People's Republic, huh? Okay, seriously, what are you doing? Why are you taking so long? Why did you take so long to get over there? Uh, Honestly, we can't do anything about this, so... We can't get over there in time, can we? The end of Sabor. For the last time, Shushkin, the sooner we get rid of that madman's deranged administration, the easier our lives will be. Why on earth should we humor these lunatics when they won't even give us the same courtesy? Alexander put Christian's pace up and down his office, taking with his hands as he went. For the past 20 minutes, he had been arguing with the mayor of Barnall over the fate of the so-called Zemsky Sabor, and once again, the two men found themselves at an impasse. Mayor Shushkin rubbed his temples, his eyes weary and distant. If we're going to keep ripping up local administrations and replacing them, it's only going to mean more work for us. Time we could have spent on more important matters, we will instead be wasting on sorting out bureaucracy. He sighed. I'm not suggesting we keep the Sabor rather updated to fit our needs. But Kurshkin turned to Shushkin. Perhaps his colleague had a point. After all, what's the purpose of demolishing a perfectly functional administration just to replace it with something that serves the same purpose? On the other hand, the president knew that keeping the Sabor in any form would encourage a certain degree of autonomy. Shushkin does have a compelling case. Well, 50% is kind of nice, but 0% is not very good right now. 
Can you get in there? Come on. Go, 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 go. We're going to lose because of, of incompetency. Oh, my goodness. Screw Omsk. I'm going to make you make sure that they all burn in a hole. There's a quarter of Kimmerobo soon. Are you going to win? Or, oh, they're going to lose. We're going to lose it. That sucks. For the nation, it had become the habit of Vasily Shushkin to spend the hours of the night cooped up in his office, working until the wee hours of the morning. It hadn't been like that when he had simply been the mayor of, of Barnall, but with his elevated position, so many things had changed. He had tri tried, of course, and it wasn't like he enjoyed uh, working until the a.m., but it was something that the man felt as if he had to do. Shushkin's place in the administration of the Federation had placed him front and center in what passed for political machinations of the polity, resulting in his less than cynical ideals of being the natural foil for his political counterpart, Pokrushkin. But as the documents bled together, the words and letters became increasingly incomprehensible in Shushkin's brain. Out of the fog that permeated his mind came the deep words that only ever emerged on the latest of nights. His mind went to the origins of the Federation and how it was originally based on the freedom and liberty, but how the necessity of the Federation system had resulted in an erosion of the Federation's basic principles, revealing corruption, apathy, and cynicism. Unfortunately embodied by many of his political peers, he felt conflicted about his role in the state, and how it would or wouldn't play out. He had once been a genuine Democrat, convinced of the Federation's noble methods, but as, as the situation de degraded, Shushkin could do nothing but wonder if the support of Pokrushkin and the Federation in general had been worth it. After no small deliberation, Shushkin spoke to himself quietly, as if he, if he wanted no one to hear here, despite the utter absence of company in his lonely office. I remember the struggle against tyranny. I'll hold on to that memory and do my best to justice. So be it. And we lost the battle because I hate Omsk. Seriously, I'm going to take you guys out. Oh, at least we can beat them there. Get your buttholes over here. I'm going to blow the hell out of these guys. We're going to war as fast as we can against uh, Krasnoyarsk. That is stupid. We've been raided, dear God. I'm going to murder every single one of these people. They're going to wish that they did not do that. Can I crucify these people? Garrison slaughtered? Are you kidding me? Are you flipping kidding me? I'm going to go straight and kill every single one of these people. Leave no man, woman, or child, uh, you know, undisturbed. Every single one of them is going to die here. You will not do this again. Oh, we're out of focuses. Oh, the Sovereign Heartland. Silence reigns with the noise and din of the marketplace once ruled. Where merchants from faraway lands came to haggle their goods in the bazaars of thought that were once a central Siberian republic, now their stalls lay upturned on the gravel streets. The contents gathered at the pyre, waiting for the single match stroke. The narrow next communists and, uh, anarchists, idealists, rurikids. All are priests of false gods masquerading as an intent of human innovation and improvement. Nothing they could offer could enlighten a person to his sovereignty. The noise and din offer nothing but flirtations with the meaningless. The Federation has embraced a silence where ideals have once been worshipped. We have direct the idols of these ersatz divinities and cast them out. There is nothing noble in idealism. The act of believing in a higher ideal does not render one a paragon. The brutality of ideologies is over and the sovereignty reigns alone supreme. Good. Kill every single last one of them. I want all of them hanging on a, on a, from rope. How dare you try to defeat us? Force the attack. Kill every last one of them. Every single one of them. I don't want a single person spared. Force it. Force every single one of them to die right now. I do not care what it takes. You find them, you kill every single one of them. Good. Good, good, good. Alright, up next. Um, we still have some loot. That's good. Uh, consumer goods. How many, how many do we already have? Once we get to like minus 90%, I think we'll probably stop. Who's that one? There we go. We'll save some PP2. That'd be good. Hey, I didn't say finish. You're just going to beat them up and then leave them alone. No, you're going to find them and you're going to kill every single last one of them. I don't care how much command power it takes. I really don't. If they're alive, you're not doing your job. If you'd like to read about the, cross, the railway junction, please go right ahead. That'll help us out. And I'm going to burn the hell out of Omsk next. I think. Oh, actually, no. We can't do that one yet. Right? Seize Arsenal. Welcome the Willing. Might as well. And People's Revolutionary Council. Darn it. I'm going to kill Omsk. I swear to God, I will kill Omsk until they die. Good. Let time go on first, though. Integrate them. Even though they should all burn. Come on. Was it worth it, Krasnoyarsk? Was it really worth it?
But at least we get more political power now. And it's only 1964, so not too bad. Really, not too bad. Ah, facing forward. Alex Alexei Pesterev didn't feel the fear, but when he f came face to face with Pokrushkin, the man who led the newly formed federation, he felt his internal temperature drop a couple degrees. It wasn't the physique or mannerism of the man that disturbed him, but it was the simple reality of the situation. Coming face to face with the man who overthrew his government, and at the other side of the jail cell conjured up images that Pesterev would rather not have. And so they sat there waiting for the other to make a, a move until Pokrushkin spoke up. Mr. Pesterev, said Pokrushkin, I understand that you and Andreev are on less than stellar terms, considering that I'm in a jail cell. Yes, me and him are not exactly the best of friends at the moment. But Krushkin laughed. That is understandable, you know. I hate to see such potential wasted rotting in a cell. I've always preferred to think of human life as having a little bit more value alive than dead or in prison. Pestera felt his eyebrows raise a little, wondering to where this was going. I have a proposition for you, if you'd like to hear it. A proposition? Pokrushkin pulled out a piece of paper and slid it in between the metal bars. I'm not an expert in the affairs of Krasnorsk or his people, nor do I think I could learn it in the time necessary to make a difference. That is why I'm offering you an opportunity to work for me, for your freedom, and for a better future for Russia. You don't have to decide now, but I'll do it. Pokrushkin stopped, a little shocked at being interrupted. That look, however, disappeared and was replaced with a smile. I didn't expect that, especially after how long you worked for Andreev. Pesterev smiled in spite of his best attempts at suppressing it. Well, it's not like I've done it before. Excellent. Welcome back, General Pesterev. Good. Now kill every single one of them. Every single family member you find must burn. And Krasnoyarsk. Siberian Black Army, let them kill each other off. I, I like that idea a lot. No, not Tricky Dick. That's still, they still have a very cool flag here. The Siberian Black Army. Uh, they, good, they have no manpower. They both have no manpower. This should make things easier. Not easy, but at least easier. More construction speed. More speed. More speed. More speed. Uh... I want to have even more loyalty from these people. Oh, we don't have no political power. Darn it. That's still not bad, though. Wow, loyalty is pretty bad for the Titan. Uh, they barely have any loyalty, though. But the people have quite a bit of loyalty. That's not too bad. More loyalty, please. Does that help us? Oh, oh look at that. Minus 70% consumer goods. 70% construction speed. Holy crud. Operation Tachanka? Yes, please. And loot. Very nice. Building, 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 building. And what's the construction speed like? 0.6. Not bad. I love it. Come on, let us go to war. Oh, Hadrish. Oh no, Hadrish, no. Papa Hadrish. Oh, Goring might win. Maybe there's potential for him to win. Maybe. Actually, it's. Oh no, anyone's game. Omsk. Um. I think it's probably best if we... Uh, how do we do this? I think we need to go to... Or by the, oh, there goes Kennedy. Uh, how many more days do we have left this? So, let's go, let's wait. And the day before this happens, we're going to say we will not back down so easily. And then we'll go to war. For three days. Two days. I don't think this is going to work well, but we're going to do that. And there you go. They don't get any loot. You all hold. You guys go all the way in and kill these guys off. And I'm going to kill Omsk. I swear to God. Omsk is going to have to die. A hard, bloody death. Force it. And then we'll get rid of these guys as soon as we can. Which would be very, very good. Hey, we got him. Nice. And we'll do some more equipment. Nice. Workers' Council. Disband the Workers' Council. That'll be good. Very nice. Very, very good. Cracking the councils, it was a shock to the many desert denizens of the former free territory to hear about the proclamation 1821 of the Federation's government officially abolishing the Workers' Council. To many others, the outcome was expected, and the shock came from the how long it took. Despite the Federation's best efforts, the imprints of anarchism could not be fully removed. It had been too embedded into society for that to happen, especially among the working class, who unsurprisingly made up most of the working councils. Consequence the biggest of them and threatened outright rebellion against the Federation if such an action was ever taken. That, of course, was only rhetoric. Everyone knew that one way or another, the workers' councils would be destroyed. Many, even within the councils, debated what course of action to take, but despite the radicalism of some members, the majority accepted the defeat. The proclamation was expected, and they tried with the best of their abilities to make the, the transition as best as possible. But the next day, it was reported in the papers of the Konsk that three different mega-corporations had begun to carve up the formerly worker-run factories, shops, and other facilities controlled by the councils. Within the course of several weeks, the unions once so powerful started to accept that their old place in the hierarchy of capitalism. Neighborhoods once more became divided between workers, with the corporations battling out on the remains of who would get what. The workers shall be free someday. Not today. Definitely not today, but someday. Um, I might do this. I want to get 
Oh, how many how many pieces of artillery do we have? We have so many guns. My goodness. If we were to make these guys 20 combo with immediately, ah, screw it. We're gonna do it like this, and we'll make 40 combo with divisions next. We got more than enough guns for them. So there you go. Thank you. Any more support companies? How much support equipment do we have? Support equipment, not much. So we'll, we'll save it for now. 20 combat with infantry, not too bad. Breaking the anarchists. For the past couple months, the all Siberian army has been dealing with the remnant forces of the Black Army. Almost all our holdout generals, militias, and other organizations that refuse to submit to the will of a federation and instead place a rebellion at the barrel of a gun. What began as an outright treasonous act, openly committed by militiamen, gradually transformed into terrorism against the state and its property. Army compounds were bombed, killing dozens and injuring more. Police headquarters. <clears throat> Set up in high population areas, were routinely attacked and looted for firearms, and as quickly as they were attacked, the HQs were empty of all red perpetrators. But the former free territory could only hold out for so long soon as weeks turned into months. Some of the diehards began to question whether their acts were in any way helpful to the cause. Soon as the troops began pouring in, the compounds and the safe houses were raided, the members of the underground black army began to dissipate. Some chose to leave the free territory, others a whole lot of central Siberia. A couple even decided to leave Russia, hoping for a better chance at the revolution ahead. Some, however, decided to stay, and while they continued their revolutionary actions, the all Siberian armies been ever present to combat them. While the remnants may never fully go away, the Siberian army stands tall and ready to crack whatever resistance remains. The all Siberian army fears no reds of any shade. Cool. I'm ready to kill a Fomsko. I'm ready to just get rid of every single last one of them. To you men, good luck with that, but I'm ready to just crack all of them open. Um, Paladar, oh, they're actually trying to fight. Oh, they're part of Kazakhstan. That's kind of nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, I see. I see. Consumer goods. Okay, we'll do that one. Why not? And oh, oh how about over here? Minus 75%, and it's all green. Uh, or, yeah, of course, except for consumer goods, which makes sense, but still. And which we... Oh, we integrated Konsk, which is very, very good. And hopefully we can do this very, very soon. And there goes Comey. Goodbye, Comey. More... Oh, my gosh. Wow, we're going to be maximizing that stuff as much as possible. We're definitely going to need way more artillery for this, so... Jesus Christ, that's a lot. Holy crap. Okay, we'll do that then. And then do that. And then do some more of that. Wow. This is incredibly strong. At this point, let's take a look at this. Loyalty is 84. Uh, even more. Minus 22%. Holy crap. This is incredibly strong. My goodness, I'm loving it. Operation Soul Survivor. Even though we should probably start saving some more PP up for the People's Revolutionary Council, as well as stuff like that. So, go and stop training. 20 combo width will be probably pretty strong compared to what these guys should not have, which is manpower. Vasilevsky? Oh, they do have a helicopter division, and up to 10 divisions in total. Oh, who's going to war with us? Oh, they're going to war with us. Okay, oh, that's fine. Whatever, you know. Loot? Eh, we might be able to do that. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not, actually, but whatever. We should be able to do well, though. Dresh little wins, but they're out of manpower, I thought. So, oh, look at, oh, they're extremely weak. That is nice to see. Even their IFVs are extremely weak. Oh, goal ring is one. Oh, boy. Well, looking pretty good so far. That goes industrial support. Goal ring wins at German Civil War. The fat man. Another division. Jolly good. 64 divisions before we become even a unifier. My goodness. That is just nuts. Even though we do have 98 uh, XP here. Who's winning around this area? Are Kutsk doing well? Um, I might do the free av aviators. Can we steal them away from other people? I kind of want to try that. Zero uh, percent. The people, which makes sense. Can we take them over even if we don't aren't next to them? And only Central Siberian Warlords and Central Siberian World. Oh, Central Siberian. Oh, that sucks. Well, I guess we'll, let's just wait first. Like, just wait. I don't want to waste stuff and stuff like that, so. You guys can move right on in. Please. Thank you. Don't let them live. Please. German intervention in Africa. Very cool. Wow. Are they going to just... How many men have we lost? We only have 24,000 uh, manpower. Well, we've done pretty well. 14,000 versus 60 guys. We only have 10 divisions of own front man. Okay. Cool. It was a simple operation. See, didn't even cost us ammo or nothing. Not that we weren't using essentially the same rifles. Laughter.
All we had to do was fiddle with a few uniforms we bought off the drug men. When you do conscription in a crime paradise, sooner or later, everything in your darn army is going to have a price. Easiest purchase the infiltration unit ever did. So we just rode a convoy. Well, appropriate, hijack, whatever you like, straight into enemy lines. And we had the merchant clothing and gear at the right time, right? A little bribery and a meaningful gesture to the local house of good fortune. And, well, we were in business and speeding into the factory lines. As it turned out, we didn't even need passports. So you can tell that egghead that we're, he's not getting any of our vodka rations tonight. A little barking in the local dialect, and we had the god darn managers lapping at her feet. They were really scared, though. Nova Sibirsk really isn't, ain't churning out good people these days. Who would have thought the criminal city would make such rotten soldiers? A little marching back and forth, and a conference were all filled up, and then we had them all lined up in the square, threw a bunch of paperwork at the head of production, and we left, just left them there in the snow. Best part of it was, we'd apparently been far better requisitioners than the last bunch who roughed them up. I hear we got a, co a co commendation letter before they realized the goods were going to Kaisel. Anyway, total success. Brilliant hero of the Soviet. Blah, blah, blah. Now, if you excuse me, I hear there's a whore town in, the t in town that I can... Or house, whorehouse in town I can spend my promotion bonus on. We got caught by a bunch of Mongolians? Wait, what is that about? Uh, I'm not really sure, but I keep killing them. Un How do we keep making these divisions these quickly? It would help if I made this, though. Just go to Dundas. Dundas? Okay, kind of nice. Choppers. Chopper time. And that division is dead. Nice. So much PP. Alright, so... Oh, the internal affairs. Look at this. Let's see... I mean, that's still pretty good for where we're at. The first thing... Sh Shukov checks as he's dragged blindfolded into the barn house as a smell. Novosibirsk is teeming, swollen mass of factions and sub-factions struggling for money, drugs, and power. Every soldier in the security force has learned in his first month to tell each other apart. Their hand signs, dialects, and culture, their smells. The one that they don't, well, they don't survive long after that. And so he recognizes almost immediately that he's in a district just south of the mouth of the Ob River, and that this warehouse is different, almost military-grade polish and cordite. In fact, Suchov, Suchkov suspects his kidnapping looks like, well, an inside job. Perhaps one of Glinka's flyboys has commandeered this depot? He sneezes as a cloth bag is pulled off his head, snorting out the rough fiber. God, the city can be filthy sometimes. And then he's looking into the slightly upturned smile of Bolslaw. He barely keeps his voice level. I take it you're the person responsible for this. Release me. I'm with the Bureau. You know. Bolslaw smiles level and cold. If you haven't been with the Bureau, I'd have you killed already. I'm not going to waste time. We know what you're here to find, and we have tabs and everything. Your work, home, Kirch. Octave, we know everything there is a note. He gestures to the table arrayed before the art agent surgeon. So nobody people have, in the kindness of their heart, offered you a choice. You can keep the money and the receipts of money, and not to take Kurchatov and run until he hits Muscovine, or we can dispose of your problems for you. A brief look at the other end of the table, and suddenly it's clear to Suchkov that no matter which choices he makes, his life as a bureau informant is over. Suchkov looks at the photos displayed like blood splatters, and then it looks at the money, and he chooses, my gosh, these Svodbani fellows are everywhere. Um, okay. Where is that coming from? Not sure if I really understand. Where is that coming from? Moron? Ah, uh, these guys should be dead. Where's the capital now? You must force all these enemies to die. I mean, if they want to, don't want to give up. I mean, that's their, that's their prerogative. So, seriously, how much? How much more? We've killed off twenty thousand of them, but losing less than two hundred. So, nice. End of the South African War. Can I raid somebody else? I would love to be able to raid someone else. Alright, there we go. Integrate Tuva. That'd be good. Oh, Akatobe. I wanted to burn Omsk. How dare you? But I guess we might as well do a Sovereign Heartline. The Federation's heart. Very good. Uh, too bad we can't scan for more things. I guess we'll do both of these. That's fine. The Tuba Proposal. The Red Army remnants of the so-called People's Revolutionary Council have been defeated, and their vast territories in Taunu, Tuba, and Mongolia are now under the protection of the Federation. Administering these new conquests have already become the subject of furious debate within the government, however. President Poros Kirshkin, unsurprisingly, advocates for a simple process of annexation into the Federation as a regular territory. This would further encourage the centralization of our authority. But some argue that the federally administered territories are stretching thin enough as it is, and adding new lands on top of what would only compound our problems. The Influential Mayor Barnal, Vasily Shushkin, has put forward a different proposal altogether. He believes it would be necessary to form a new republic within the Federation's borders, the Federal Republic of Tuva. Not only will this make integration a more painless affair, but also get, go great lengths towards discouraging separatism. The final say, of course, lies with the President. New Republic? They shall be annexed like the rest? New Republic. Meng Xiang. Xiang. Cool. Um, how good are consumer goods? Because we even have a bonus of consumer goods right now. <clears throat> so, I guess... Construction speed... And 
And I'll do it one more time. There we go. Nice. And the Divine Mandate of Siberia wants to beat us up. Oh, you can try. You can try so dastardly. But you ain't going to do well, son. Ah, we will make sure of it. Level 6 attack. Good god, that's really good. Oh, Divine Mandate of Siberia, you are sorely mistaken. Please let me scavenge for one more thing, please. <laughs> that's kind of a long video, isn't it? A solemn oath. To my last breath, to the faithful, to the people, the Soviet motherland, and the workers' peasant government. It only felt like yesterday that he was swearing his oath, graduating as one of the many in the nameless training facilities in Ukraine. He had been young then, naive and impressionable, doing his patriotic duty to the state before the winter war, Barbarossa, before the fall of Moscow, and the long march across the Urals. What a bad word joke. The army had been betrayed, self-sabotaged at every turn by politicians and secret police who had no idea what they were doing. Officers arrested for disobeying suicidal orders, NKVD flunkies, second-guessing every move, men wasted in futile counterattacks and reckless offenses. All headed by a man who seemed more interested in moving cities in Siberia than leading a nation of war. And now here he was, a remnant of another remnant of the Red Army. Rumors were going around that the Federation's armed forces were offering to take in anyone willing. Ultimately, the decision of becoming a civilian in a foreign land or enlisting in an army not in service. Of a failed ideology was an easy choice to make. I solemnly swear that I'm going to kill every single one person here and... Oh, it's 30 days. In 30 days, we can get another loot. Is it wait, best to wait? We'll wait 30 days. I want to get at least one more of these done first. Because we're already halfway there. A new republic. Basili Shushkin rubbed his temples as he stared down at a blank piece of paper on his desk. He found little time to indulge in art his artistic side since becoming Mayor Barnon, who usually spent the quieter moments trying to catch up to the flurry of novel ideas his mind would manifest during work hours. Sometimes, however, even his passions would prove frustrating, as Shushkin had spent the last hour and a half debating how to actually start this particular piece. Laying his pen aside, Shushkin sighed as he reached for his drink. Before his hands could even touch the glass, the phone rang and shattered the melancholy silence of his office. So much for that drink, he thought, Shushkin here, I hope you've got good news for me. That's Kurchenko. You're proposal about the Tuvan Republic and went through. Shushkin's eyes went wide. That's not the outcome he was expecting, really? I'm surprised post Christian let it happen. This is good news, indeed. You should probably come down here and make an announcement before he takes all the credit. <clears throat> Very well, I'll see you soon, Kerchenko. Shushkin signed off as he placed the phone back. After a brief moment to regain his thoughts, he glanced once again at the empty paper on his desk. Shushkin's writings would have to wait once more, but he had time. But he had a flight to catch. The priorities of the real world and the Federation's heart. It was a triumphant occasion. Crowds of cheering citizens greeting the conquerors of Central Siberia. The men of the All Siberian Army marched with military precision, exuding pride and confidence. The Air Force flying overhead. Shushkin was supposed to be celebrating, mingling with the Siloviki in the corporate suit. Yet, as he watched soldiers march through Novosibirsk, Novosibirsk streets, all he could feel was apprehension. But Kurushkin meant well, and that was. That much was obvious, but he could see the divide between the two of them was growing with, with every passing day. Barnall and his native Alpay seemed ever more alien compared to the corruption and apathy in the Federation's capital. As the mayor watched the acrobatics display of the Siberian air fleet, he couldn't help but think something has to give. After winning over here, too. Wait, so they attack us and we still don't win. Man, we've got 15 days left. Oh, that's fine. Throw them over here. And go and do that, too. That'd be good. Oh, we can form this... Oh, Bennett? Hello, Bennett. Uh, I, I do want to save some stuff here. Come on, guys. Oh, we've integrated them. Give us 10 days. We'll do that. And then we will uh, go to the Warlord stage. Or we'll advance out of the Warlord stage, really. Oh, oh, we can do this immediately. Okay, that's good. The Victorious Federation? Not bad. The Siberian Economy? Expand the All-Siberian Army? Or Future Geopolitical... Oh, Okay. The Siberian economy. Our consolidation of the central Siberia has opened up to us the vast wealth and potential that lies within Siberia. Siberia contains the potential to become the foundation of a strong Russian state, one that extends its might from the Pacific to Moscow. In order to properly realize Siberia's potential, we must leverage our already impressive industrial base to exploit the wealth of the region. With the help of the national champions, our economic growth will only truly be frightening to behold. Well, we're already pretty frightening as, as it is. We're doing very well. Oh, come on. Five days, five days, five days. Come on, keep training, keep getting better. And we'll probably just try to make these guys straight up 40 combo with immediately. And I'm going to go with agriculture methods because it's been a while since we've actually done that one. All right, good. And reunification of Russia. Central Siberian Republic. Thank you. Beautiful, my friends. And let's end this episode with a new research, shall we? Yes, we shall. All right, it is 1965. Hope you guys are having a great year. But let's do this one. And I hope you enjoyed this video, my friends. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we will continue expanding and industrializing and making our place a better part of Russia to live in. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.